What was it about Nazareth that made them push away the one who came to set them free? What was it about Nazareth? Well, Nathaniel's going to tell us. Nathaniel doesn't get a lot of speaking parts in the Bible, so let's pay close attention. It's very uncommon that Nathaniel speaks, but the Bible tells us one thing that he said that this whole text and our entire understanding of why God often cannot do what he wants to do in our lives, it hinges on this. Because when Philip came to find Nathaniel, he was excited about Jesus. This is when Jesus was first assembling his squad. This is before he sent them out to do any miracles, and Philip comes running up to his friend Nathaniel. He's called Nathaniel in John's Gospel. Other writers call him Bartholomew. He had an alias. Here he's called Nathaniel. And Philip comes to Nathaniel because sometimes the first thing you do when you really meet Jesus is drag people with you. Sometimes when God really gets a hold of your life, you will bribe people into coming to church with you. You'll buy them Starbucks to get them to sit with you in church because you know how messed up they are, but you can't tell them that. But if you drag them in this church and let me open the Bible, God will tell them, and together the Holy Spirit in you can get them fixed. And so you say, come with me to church, and they say, I don't like church. And you say, well, this is not normal church. And they say, oh, I've been to church before. I heard about that evolution church. I don't really want to go to that church. Isn't that the church? Ah, that's the church where you're coming with me. Now shut up and come. And so Philip found Nathaniel, verse 45, John 1, and told him, we have found the one. Somebody shout, we found him. This is the one Moses wrote about in the law and whom the prophets also wrote. Watch. Jesus. Of Nazareth. Where's he from again? Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathaniel's reaction helped me to understand why the people of Nazareth resisted Jesus and missed his miracles. And it helped me understand why I tend to push people away sometimes. And it helped me understand. Why sometimes I reject the love people are trying to give me, but really I'm rejecting something else. Because when Philip said, We found the one, Nathaniel was excited. But when he said where he was from, Jesus of Nazareth, Philip said, 46, Nazareth. Let me do this in my best AI voice. Practice. Nazareth. Nazareth. Talking about Nazareth? Watch what he says. It hinges on this. I thought they only rejected Jesus and took offense and were trapped, scandalon, to set a trap. I thought they were offended by Jesus because they were so familiar with him. But now I think the reason that they rejected Jesus is because they rejected themselves. Apparently, Nazareth had a reputation because the first thing Nathaniel said was, Nazareth, can anything good come from there? That's how I feel about myself sometimes, you know? Because I know myself. And when they took offense at him, at first I was angry with them. Then I realized they weren't really rejecting him. They had a reputation. Nazareth is this uh, backwoods town. Nazareth is on nobody's bucket list. They talk funny in Nazareth. It's not like Jerusalem. It's not a very religious place. Nazareth. You mean the boy with a baby daddy? Who we're not even sure. Nazareth? He came from us. It wasn't that they couldn't believe what he did, they couldn't believe it came from them. His miracles to them were remarkable. But when they tried to reconcile the fact that he was one of them with what he was doing, they they couldn't reconcile the fact that something good could come from us. And when you have a view of yourself that has been shaped year after year, even generation after generation, 
by stereotypes or by generalizations or by failures. It comes to a point where you really start to believe that nothing good can come from you. And some of you are right there today, trapped in Nazareth, because you got some things in your past, and some of them aren't even your fault. But just because it wasn't your fault doesn't mean it's not your prison. And in this room, there is sexual molestation that happened 23 years ago and still dominates your perception of what your future can be. And there are many in this room who are still imprisoned in a failed relationship. The relationship failed five years ago, but you are living in it in this very moment. Nazareth. Can anything good come from someone like me? He's just like us. He's one of us. And they were amazed at first, and then they began to despise what they were first amazed at when they realized, wait a minute, he's one of us. There is a part of us that is able to believe that God is great. But when we try to reconcile the fact of his greatness with the reality of our brokenness, we start to feel like these people, and we push Jesus away. And It's not that we can't believe that he's great. It's just that we can't believe that anything good could come from our life, because there's so much that I don't know, and there's so much that I should have done, and so much that I shouldn't have done, and now I'm trapped in Nazareth because, see, I've made some mistakes, and I know Jesus is a healer, and I know he's amazing, and I know he's a miracle worker. It's not his miracle-working power that's in question here. It's me. I'm trapped in Nazareth. It's it's me, and I'm going to preach till all of your facade comes falling off. Because you come in this church, and you look at me a certain way, and you come with this sterile approach to God, but he can't do what he really wants to do in your life because you're trapped in Nazareth. And so you'll listen to me preach, and you'll sing a few songs, and you'll say a few prayers. But Jesus is limited in what he can do through your life because you are trapped in what you were. Nazareth was so unknown and so disregarded that Nathaniel's first response was, not Nazareth, not Nazareth, like the devil tells you, not you. You really think you can raise those kids? You never saw it done. What makes you think you're going to be any better than your dad was? It's what tells you you can't. It's what can be in proximity of the power of God, but not receive. They were right there, but they resisted and rejected it. And yet it wasn't Jesus they were rejecting. Was that they had been rejected. When people have said something about you long enough, you start to believe it's really true. And I am convinced that the people of Nazareth that day were not rejecting Jesus as much as they were rejecting themselves. See, you have to develop your view of who God is through the prism of who you think you are. And if you believe the rest of your life that you are worthless, it will be very hard for you to worship a God who thought you were worth dying for. As a matter of fact, I want to help set somebody free who has been disappointed because someone rejected you. A lot of times, they're not rejecting you. A lot of times, what they are rejecting is something that had nothing to do with you. And sometimes they push you away because there's something pushing on the inside of them. A lot of what we experience as rejection is really just projection. It's people who have been disappointed, 
who have been hurt, and now you're thinking, what's wrong with me? Why doesn't she appreciate me? It's not you she doesn't appreciate. It's that she can't appreciate herself because she has not yet healed from something. Sometimes when people are pushing you away, it's not even about you. Stop being so self-centered. Stop thinking that people are responding to you. People have real hurts. People have real issues. Sometimes they can't get over what happened to them to celebrate you. Will you love them anyway? Are you strong enough in God? Is your relationship with him strong enough to know? that what they say about me doesn't change who I am. Men's denial cannot block my destiny. Jesus was still a prophet, whether they knew it or not, whether they celebrated him or not, whether they rolled out a red carpet or ran him out of town. He knew who he was. Do you know who you are, or do you need people to tell you who you are? Because if you let people tell you who you are, they'll say you're just a carpenter. They'll say you're just a single mom. They'll say you're just a teenager. They'll say you're just a divorcee. But if you know who God is, you realize your life is not defined by an event. Oh, as a matter of fact, it actually is. That event happened on a hill called Calvary when he shed his blood for me, when the precious Lamb of God looked at me through time and said, I'll die for him. So now I know. That I am accepted by him. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the message, just do two simple things before you go. Click the logo to subscribe to this channel so you won't miss a video. I promise I'll make it worth your while. And second, take a minute and share it with somebody who could use it or just leave a comment. I love to hear how these videos are impacting you. It means a lot to me. Thanks again for watching.